I want to talk about distortion today because I fairly often get the request to review Tube from Good Hertz and I've never did it. So it's time for some distortion and let's get started. All right, Tube from Good Hertz. This is it. Tube plus tape is Tube. Tube, tape, tube, 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 tube. I'm going to call it tube from now. Oh, wait, here, here they're saying how you should say two up. Is that correct? Two up. I don't know how to read this, these things. I mean, I, I schooled audio engineering, not languages. Definitely not pronunciation. <laughs> a timeless pairing, a vacuum tube amplification and magnetic tape recording brought to you in one essential plugin, tube. It's interesting how the world has shifted, how the audio engineering world has shifted. So back in the days, having saturation in your recording was unavoidable. Recording to analog tape had the side effect of giving you distortion and noise and flutter and whoa and a, a, lo a lot of things. And then digital audio came along and uh, we first had a whole period of having different type of distortion, aliasing distortion, you know, nasty distortion. Digital distortion doesn't sound that pleasing. So we did our best to have no distortion anymore whatsoever. However, it turns out we actually like the distortion. Uh, we humans, we like a little bit of that saturation, a little bit of that warmth. And it's now one of the most sought after things in, in the box recording in the box processing of audio because we kind of need and want that harmonic distortion. Plugins like these help us with that. Let's just take a look at it. Let's take a look at it. This is it. It looks a little bit different than on the website and that's because I, uh, yeah, it, it, it should have an extra section here. Uh, oh, there it is. We've got drive output compressor. These are different uh, tube versions. These are different uh, tape versions. Yeah, it says it over here. Uh, okay, okay. And then? Okay, mm, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, getting it. Yeah, yeah, okay. Before I'm going to take a look at that, I want to say that the reason that I'm reviewing this is because I got tips from the community. I'm not in contact with Good Hertz whatsoever. I'm running the demo and everything that I'm saying in this video is my honest and complete independent opinion. If you appreciate that and want to support the channel, uh, check out my affiliate links uh, over here for hardware, Toman and Sweetwater, and for software, Plugin Boutique. Uh, using the affiliate links helps the channel a lot. So if you appreciate my videos, make sure to use the links. They're also in the description down below so that you can just click it instead of scanning it. Thanks a lot. And now let's add some distortion to this track because this, I mean, it already sounds a little bit distorted, this, but I think it can use way more. It sounds a bit too digital for me. So let's see if we can analogize this. Oh, there's no auto gain. Oh, cool. No auto gain, so that's already annoying. That's really annoying me. Wow, listen to what... A tube distortion, I mean tube saturation is just so... I would love to have just a box in the studio. And I think they exist. But just, just something that is just full of tubes, only tubes, doing nothing at all, just tubes. And I can, you know, tweak things. Maybe I should just make something like that. Yeah, I don't have time to do that, but I, I did make a few tube things uh, back in the days because I think that tubes are just pretty easy to work with. They're, they're, they're so simple or something, and it's so easy to make a good sounding tube circuit. So may maybe I should just make a box like that myself with a lot of different tubes in there. You know, can also act as a heater in the winter. Might be ah, just, just tube, nothing else. No EQ compression, whatever, just 
tubes. I'm going to call that box just tubes. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Annoying. Okay. Let's keep this in the center. And uh, let's just take the drums here. Yeah, low speed, of course, yeah. Can I drive it more? I want to drive it more. Oh, then I just have to do this, I think. No noise, no noise, we don't want that. The next time I have to hype up a drum kit from a drummer that just isn't drumming, you know, with enough energy, I'm gonna use this! And we also have a filter here. What, what can we do with the filter? Ah, okay. The tilt filter. Oh, that's on the output. I was thinking it was just on the... Oh, emphasis. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, emphasis filter. So emphasis is just... Um, what it basically is doing is um, uh, it's using a filter on the input and then uh, on the output it's doing the opposite thing so that the effect triggers more on that uh, on that filter. And what I'm doing now is a, I'm cutting out a little bit of the lows because it's it's distorting a little bit too much there to my liking. Oh cool, oh cool, wow. Wow. Okay. Let's see what those uh, what those tubes all uh, all can do. Like all different type of tubes. It's so interesting. That's why I'm saying like if I want to make such a box, it has to have multiple different type of tubes because. And I think the EL34 is a pentode tube. Yeah, it is. Like here you can see, like we've got one, two, three, four, five. So it's a pentode. It's a different type of distortion. And it, and, and let's compare this um, with, with a 12AX7, which is a triode. But listen to the difference in, in distortion shape. Let's remove the emphasis. Yeah, it's very typical. This is very typical triode, and this is very typical uh, uh, pentode. So pentode is more, you know, it has it has to do with the the harmonics and and where the harmonics fall. Um, but to better describe it, a triode, to my opinion, sounds more open and more musical, while a pentode sounds a bit more grainy and gritty. Uh, it has a bit more what what can I, more 
low end power to it. I don't I don't know how to how to f- describe this. I mean, you've just heard it, uh, but that's really that's really interesting here. Uh, let's also compare the different types of of tape. So we basically got a two track and a C90, which I think is a cassette tape. <laughs> Cool that you're also hearing the um, yeah. You're also hearing the different filtering, of course, because if a, a tape machine runs on a lower speed, it cannot register the high frequencies. So a low speed tape machine is also, you know, doesn't register the high frequencies. Really cool plugin. Very, very exciting plugin actually. Very, very nice to also learn a little bit about tubes and tapes in general and about analog distortion. Uh, really, really cool. Uh, make sure to use it in high quality mode because it will then oversample like crazy and that's really needed for plugins like these. And the reason why you want to do oversampling is, uh, let me quickly show you that here on my uh, analyzer. Um, so, I'm now inputting a, a pretty high frequency. This is my base frequency, and you can see here, this, these are my, uh, this is the distortion that I'm creating here. Uh, you can see some distortion here, something here like this, uh, whatever. But now turn off the oversampling. Look at all the crap that we are getting. What happens is, is that this plugin is creating harmonics that output beyond Nyquist. And if something is beyond Nyquist, it, it cannot exist. So how the, Engineering works behind that is that it basically it folds back. So we've got Nyquist here, and this is, these are our frequencies that are uh, beyond Nyquist, and it, it, it then basically it it folds back, literally folds back. They call it fold back distortion as well. The problem with that is that uh, these frequencies are not musically related to the original content anymore, and uh, it would usually sound pretty harsh. It can create some problems with tuning, actually, when a harmonic, for instance, if you're bending on a guitar, then that frequency, like we've got Nyquist over here, that frequency is moving up a little bit, but the foldback distortion is moving down a little bit. So you've, you, you're getting very weird things. Um, so yeah, quick tip, uh, if a distortion plugin has oversampling, whether it's this one or something else, always make sure to enable it 99% of the times it will sound better and of course you can compare it if you like the harsh uh, digital weird sound which could be an option um, then just leave it off of course but in general i think that oversampling should be on by default in every single plugin i know it's a bit harder on the cpu but on the other hand modern day cpus can run so much stuff i, I mean consider this i'm running my whole studio on a basic M1 processor. Nothing special. Anyway, enough said. I will link to Good Hertz in the description down below where you can check out this plugin yourself. I'm also running the 30 day demo and uh, it's, it's really nice to check it out. And with that being said, I want to end the video over here. Uh, if you like the channel and want to support it, uh, consider becoming a member, joining the club. Uh, you can do that on Patreon or on YouTube. YouTube is down below the join button, Patreon over here. You get early access to videos, priority answer to your questions in the live stream and some exclusive content. I'll link a playlist of that over here. If you want to support the channel by watching more videos, because that helps as well, make sure to subscribe and also check out this video. Thanks a lot for watching. Keep pushing. Bye bye.